Notice that the square root of i can be expressed as x plus iy. Now, by squaring both sides, we get this expression, already separated between real and imaginary parts. From it, we can create a system of equations using the substitution of y equals to 1 over 2x in the first equation. We can solve for x and find that there are two values, plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. Substituting this result back into the second equation, we find that y is also plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. So, we found two solutions for the square root of i. We can easily see, using Euler's formula, that these two roots correspond to the points on the unit circle with angles pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Now, let's see what we get when trying to calculate the cubic root of the imaginary unit. We cube both sides and get this long expression in the right-hand side of the equation. Separating it into real and complex parts, we can clearly see the system of equations that will be formed this time. Factoring out the x in the first equation and working on the math here, we get that x equals 0 is a possible solution. This implies that y equals minus 1. The other possibility is that x squared minus 3y squared equals 0, or x squared equals 3y squared. Substituting it in the second equation of our system, we get that 9y cubed minus y cubed equals 1, which implies that y equals 1 half. Substituting back into the previous equation, we finally find that x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. So, the cubic root of i has three solutions. They correspond to the angles 3 pi over 2, pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6, which have a 120 degree or 2 pi over 3 angle separating them. The consequence is that these solutions split the circle into three equal parts. Okay, things are becoming interesting. But if you're enjoying this video, please do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us. Let's move on to the fourth root now. I warn you though, this one is way more work. So brace yourself. Just as before, we perform the fourth power on both sides of the equation. As a consequence, we get this monster. Simplifying everything and separating its real part from its complex one, we can form our system of equations. Now, we have a polynomial of degree 4, so it is really hard to solve. However, we can use a clever change of variables by introducing tx and ty. This change will be performed only in the first equation. The second equation will be rewritten in a more convenient way, and we'll use it later. Working on the math here, we get these two equations. Now, that's where things get complicated. We just found a system of equations inside another system of equations, and each of these equations has two solutions, so it's gonna be huge. This is due to the fact that performing the square root of a number produces two possible solutions, one positive and one negative. But here we have the fourth root, so we'll have even more solutions. Anyway, since the specific calculations here are not actually the point of this video, but rather their solutions, we'll skip it quickly to the final result. Hey, but do not forget that we always add now a PDF link in the description below. And this document has all the details of this video. And the idea is to help you guys to follow along at home and see every single detail in it. And I truly believe that in the specific case of this video, with all these calculations, it is an amazing exercise to be able to reproduce all of them by yourself. I promise you that it will really help you in your understanding of the complex numbers. So I highly recommend you guys downloading the PDF link in the description below. Also, it would mean the world for me and Sophia if you guys could give us feedback so that we can know if it's really helping you guys, how we can make it better and so on.
Okay, so after this tremendous amount of work, we finally found the solutions. But we notice an inconsistency with the pattern observed so far. Namely that the fourth root give us eight solutions. However, there are actually just four solutions, not eight. Let's carefully analyze each of them in terms of their angles in the unit circle, in order to find out which ones are duplicated. The first solution is this one. Using Euler's formula, we can find the angle theta by performing the inverse of the tangent on the complex part divided by the real part. This gives us two possibilities, pi over 8 or 9 pi over 8. Notice though that the cosine of this angle is positive and its sine is positive as well. Therefore, the angle must be pi over 8. The second solution is the same as the first, except that it is negative, which would correspond to 180 degree or pi rotation from the initial angle. But anyway, let's pretend we didn't notice that and do the calculation just as we did before. Using Euler's formula again, we can find the angle theta by performing the inverse of the tangent, just as before. We have two possibilities, pi over 8 or 9 pi over 8. This time though, the cosine of this angle is negative, and its sine is negative as well. Therefore, the angle must be 9 pi over 8. We repeat the same steps for the third solution in our list. We find that this point in the unit circle corresponds to the angle 5 pi over 8. The fourth solution is 13 pi over 8. We found the four solutions corresponding to the angles pi over 8, 9 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, and 13 pi over 8. Hence, all the other solutions are duplicates of these four. Now, let's prove that. For the candidates of solutions 5 and 6, we have these two complex numbers. However, we notice something. These values inside the fourth root are negative, which means that we didn't really separate the real part from the imaginary part here. This expression is a little deceiving, you know? We proceed by extracting the negative sign from this fourth root. Doing that, we get a square root of i in the denominator. Working on the math here, we can finally separate the real part from the complex one. Now we can confidently use Euler's formula. Calculate the inverse of the tangent of the complex part divided by the real one. And conclude that this solution corresponds to the angle pi over 8. But wait a second, we already found this solution before. And thus we conclude that the angles 5 and 6 are duplicates of the first one we found. Now, let's see how to get rid of the candidates 7 and 8. Using the same argument as before, we can extract the square root of i in the denominator, work on the math, and find it with the real and complex parts separated from one another. Once again, we use Euler's formula to find out that we didn't actually find new solutions, but rather the old 5 pi over 8, which implies that these two candidates are actually just duplicates of the third solution. Great, let's gather everything we found out so far and put it together in a visually pleasing way. The imaginary unit has just one solution, of course, pi over 2. The square root of i has two solutions, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. The cubic root of i has three solutions, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 3 pi over 2. The fourth root of i has four solutions, pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 9 pi over 8, and 13 pi over 8. 
Actually, this result does make sense, since the fundamental theorem of algebra states that the number of distinct nth roots of a complex number, like the imaginary unit i itself, is always n. So, for example, for the fourth root of i, there are exactly four distinct fourth roots. What about the fifth root of i? Okay, clearly there should be five solutions, which is still manageable. So let's try it. Before performing any calculations though, we can visualize its solutions. All we need to do is split the circle into five equal pieces, starting at pi over 10, since i equals to e to the power of i times pi over 2, and therefore the first angle is given by pi over 10. Anyway, let's do it by hand so that we can prove that these are indeed the correct angles. Let's use the same strategy as before. We perform the fifth power on both sides. Working on the math, we get to our system of equations. Since the calculations are too long here, we'll skip to the end results. But again, check out the PDF link for more details. At last, we find these five solutions, just as predicted. The last step is to make sure that these complex numbers correspond to the angles pi over 10, pi over 2, 9 pi over 10, 13 pi over 10, and 17 pi over 10. Let's see what Euler will tell us about each of them. These are indeed the expected angles. Just extending this logic, we can easily convince ourselves that the nth root of i is a bunch of points on the unit circle, starting at pi over 2 times n, such that it splits the circle into equal sized slices. Some unanswered questions here would be, what is the angle between these solutions in terms of n? We notice two distinct patterns, depending whether n is even or odd. Can you establish their main difference? What happens if we pick n to be negative? What about irrational? These are just a few questions that come to mind, but we don't know their answer. It's a nice challenge for you guys to try to prove some of them. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. An important thing we notice is that the set of all these solutions for all n natural is dense in the unit circle. It does not mean that all points in the circle belong to this set, but just that they are dense in it. Check out the PDF link for more details on that. I hope you liked this video. If yes, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.